The Australian Public Service Commission's State of the Service report in 2020 found that, quote, a culture of inclusion is critical for the public service to achieve the benefits of a diverse workforce that a diverse workforce can offer, unquote. These people have never heard of circular reasoning. They went on, quote, inclusion also helps individuals feel valued, supported and respected. It allows their full potential to be realised at work as it minimises any sense they might need to hide or downplay aspects of their identity, unquote. I'll say it again, you paid for this rubbish. The author of this report into the 150,000 workers in the federal public service implies that without inclusiveness, bigotry would make minorities unwelcome because, you know, that's the way Australians are these days. The author also fails to acknowledge that the, human, the Australian Human Rights Commission and its various state-based state offshoots have turned allegations of workplace discrimination into a nice little earner for themselves over the past few years. Many of these allegations go unproven because the defendant finds it more prudent to avoid the bad publicity by simply forking out some go-away money. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese didn't invite the four major banks to his jobs summit last week, despite them having 160,000 employees between them and being intricately entwined with all sorts of businesses across the country. But he did invite Helen Daly Fisher of the Equality Rights Alliance, a women's group, Wayne Miller of the Sejuna Aboriginal Corporation and Pat Turner of the Indigenous Coalition of Peaks. Now, these people might or might not have brought general insight into the jobs market to the summit, but they certainly brought their demands for inclusiveness. Where does all this stuff lead? Well, it leads to the, it leads to the so-called treaties that are currently being drawn up between the Victorian and Queensland governments and their respective Indigenous populations which make about as much sense as an awards ceremony at a transgender sporting carnival. It leads to things like the voice to parliament, which sounds nice in theory, but is just woke inclusiveness taken to its illogical extreme. So extreme, in fact, that it proposes to change our constitution. And there's the rub. We might dismiss this inclusiveness as just harmless leftism, making supposedly marginalised minorities feel all welcome and so on, but it's way, way more significant than that. This inclusiveness will fundamentally change our society because it seeks to divide us, to, to, to divide us by skin colour, sexuality and gender, if genders still exist anymore, while insinuating that to not do so will expose minorities to our inherent bigotry. With the exception of a tiny few, Australians are absolutely not bigots. We are one of the happiest, most welcoming nations in history, and our laws and institutions are ensuring equal rights for everyone. Anybody who tells you otherwise is either a diversity officer already or a recent graduate with a woke degree who's waiting to also jump aboard the diversity gravy train. It's time that train pulled into a station and let its passengers get off and return to the real world.